Hello, this is Father Louis Skirty with my wonderful guest, Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Patterson, dear friend, Bishop Frank J. Rudimer. So good to be with you, Father Louis. Thank you so much. I, I am honored that you're here. This is wonderful. Well, we say in Spanish, igualmente. It works both ways. Oh, thank you. <laughs> gracias, gracias. <laughs> um, I met Bishop Frank Rodimer. Uh, when he wasn't a bishop yet, um, many years ago. I'm ordained 40-something years. That's when I met him at my diaconate and then at my ordination. Uh, bishop Casey ordained me, and I have the pictures with you as, I guess you were vicar general then? I was uh, the chancellor. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, this is Bishop uh, Rodimer's 65th year as a priest, and we're, we're thrilled to have him with us. There are certain distinctions he has in the diocese. He was the first person in the diocese as a clergyman to be chosen to be bishop of the diocese. And also, he was the youngest ever chosen to be our bishop. And now, <laughs> he, at, at Moltos Anos, he is the oldest living bishop of our diocese and has surpassed all the bishops preceding him. Is that correct? So far, so good. That's, that's yeah. quite a distinction. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I was invited by Archbishop Garrity, who is 103. Yeah, he's the oldest the, bishop in the world. He is the oldest bishop in the world. And he's soon going to be, I think, the oldest person in the world, <laughs> because I understand the oldest is 106. But uh, this month, uh, he'll be 104. God but anyway, goodness. he ordained me a bishop. Oh, really? So really? he invited me to give the homily at uh, his anniversary as 50 years a bishop. That is so amazing. he makes me feel so young. The old song goes, you make me feel so young. <laughs> so <laughs> That's great. That's great. Let, let's go back to those, those years, the early years of your um, uh, ministry as, as priest. What was that like? And, and what year were you ordained? 51, I was ordained I in 1951. Uh, and I was 23 years of, of age. But, uh, you know, it was before uh, the Vatican Council, right. obviously. So times were completely different. I mean, I can uh, remember, for example, when I was assigned to a parish, I was in 1954, had been at the University uh, for the doctoral program in canon law. But anyway, I went to St. Brendan's. I can remember at 11 o'clock Mass, we had six Masses on Sunday morning. Wow. Nothing in the evening oh, right, because right, everybody right. had to fast from midnight. That's right. That's so right. anybody who had the 11 o'clock mass would really have a headache I before did. they even started. <laughs> but I can remember at communion time uh, at the 11 o'clock mass turning around church filled at St. Brendan's and nobody come to communion. They couldn't. They couldn't they had fast. Eat. Oh, if you were going to go to communion, you really had to go to an early mass. Right. Isn't that fascinating? So that was just one of the things that changed. I can remember Holy Saturday. That's our biggest, the Easter vigil, right. the biggest liturgy of the, of the year. We used to have to have it in the morning and very early on Easter Saturday, oh. on Holy, Holy Saturday, Saturday. Uh, morning. And I remember being on with the the priest in, in Rockaway uh, with Father Duke and I can recall and uh, there was one person in church oh look, really and we did all the things gonna bless the water bless the candles and it's just the priest you know, and just the priest and I little kid <laughs> <laughs> and, and this lady halfway up the church with her hat on <laughs> and, that, and that was it that, isn't that a, I mean sociologically what a, a, a difference Vatican II made allowing people to get more involved, uh, yeah. sac then sacramentally yeah. get involved. Apparently, uh, uh, John the Twenty Third uh, was uh, elected in in 1958, um, and he was just swamped. He said uh, his secretary, Cardinal Capovilla, oh, yeah. who just died, who just died, right, right, right on May 19th. But anyway, at the age of 100, by the way. At any rate, uh, he said that uh, John the Twenty Third. He had been his secretary, Capovilla had been his secretary 
even when he was patriarch of uh, Venice. So, uh, but he said, he remembered that um, John 23rd said, I don't know what to do with all this. I got all these questions and all these papers and everything. He says, a council. I've got to have a call a council. And uh, Father Capovilla then tried to talk him out of it. He oh, said, no, really? that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and he announced it on January 1959. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember that day very well. Oh, and how old were you then? And in well, ministry, I was, where were you? I was just uh, just a curate at St. Yeah. Brendan's in, uh, in Clifton. In Clifton, right. And uh, I can remember I had the 8 o'clock mass and coming over, and the pastor was at breakfast. And he says, I'm reading, he's reading the paper, and he said, this is the, the Pope, Pope John, Pope is calling for a council. He says, what do we need that for? <laughs> And I was so thrilled. Absolutely. The young priest. All the young priests were thrilled. We're very, exactly. We're going to have a change. Isn't that yeah. great? That's interesting. Looking back and you see that change occurring. I mean, um, most of us gradually got used to post Vatican II. Yeah. You life. take it pretty much for granted. You can't even yes. imagine that, that kind of liturgy, for example, was in Latin, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, and the priest had his back to the people and all. Uh, it was uh, it was a different different church, oh, yeah. but you know, Father Lou, um, this was coming for a long time. Pius the Twelfth was a brilliant man, mm -hmm. and he had already written encyclical letters on the liturgy and on the scripture studies. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, he he was there were so many things that were leading up to. Uh, what transpired in Vatican II. When you look back, that's so true. When you look back, we were being, I think the Holy Spirit was preparing us. And John 23rd was the right guy at the right moment yeah. to open it up. Yeah, that is true. And I'm glad you mentioned that about the Holy Spirit because, you know, that um, that is, the church makes so many mistakes. Yes. And of course, we're made up of human beings. Uh, and so there are errors that are made in, in the administration of the of the church, especially, uh, and we we recognize that as, as harshly and, mm. and with difficulty in recent years. But the the Holy Spirit is what keeps the church Absolutely. going, Absolutely. and uh, and also the, the 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 emphasis that that uh, that uh, John the twenty third put on the laity, yes, and the council put on yes. the laity, yes, that has made all the difference in the world. And, and to say that, that the full participation of the laity was so important for the liturgy. Full, I don't think we have it there yet. We haven't achieved it well, yet. No, it, uh, I, I don't think so either. But the idea, because now our wonderful Pope, Pope uh, uh, Francis, is pointing out that there are many things that yet to be done. Yes. And he's trying to make progress in that, that area. In, interesting, he's a, a post-Vatican to Pope who really lived through it and is now trying to reinvigorate uh, some of the ideas and some of the theology yeah. that maybe just was put on the side yeah, for yeah, various yeah, reasons. Yeah. By the way, that word reinvigorate, good for you. <laughs> that was uh, the word that, as I recall, uh, Archbishop Garrity used in regard to the laity. He says the laity has reinvigorated the church. Absolutely. So you picked a good word there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, going back to your early days as a priest, what, what was the role of the laity? Well, I don't think they had a lot to do. And um, uh, they, uh, it was only after the council that we started these various commissions mm. in the parish. Parish council became very important. Uh, consultation was very limited. Right. Uh, even those who were uh, chosen by the priest and approved by the bishop to be um, uh, trustees of the parish, right. they might have had something to do with it. But that's two people. Yeah, uh, right, right. And that, right. that probably was it. We had two societies of uh, laity in almost every parish, the Holy Name Society right. and the Rosary Society. And they did most uh, mostly uh, 
Fundraising. Everything, yeah. Uh, fundra- yeah, yeah. But not much else. Setting up. I no have, lectures. Right. No uh, participation in yeah. in, the, in the, the Eucharist particularly. Right. A thing like Eucharistic ministers, uh, offertory procession. No, nothing right, like right. that. Nothing. Fascinating, fascinating. It's true. Uh, my father was a member of Holy Name. My mother was a member of the Altar Rosary. Yeah. And... Like you said, they ran all the, the social activities. Of course, they, they were did. fundraisers, they but they ran all the social activities. My and mother I, liked when, when the liturgy changed and we had evening mass. She liked that, and I, I hate to say it. Um, she's Italian, and on Sunday mornings, she had to cook. So um, she never made mass on Sunday mornings growing up. When, when Vatican II allowed us to have the evening mass, she was delighted. She would go to a Sunday evening mass. That was her mass. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Came yeah, back to yeah. the church in a sense. Yeah. But it opened the doors for many people in many ways. It, it certainly did. There were paraliturgies that, particularly re- reciting the rosary and uh, the uh, benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, and those, the, you know, they, they became very popular. Oh, yes. yes. And uh, almost every parish had... Uh, had the novena to the miraculous medal or some such thing. Right. My mother, God rest her soul, took me every Monday night. I don't know how big I was or <laughs> how uh, I wasn't very big, but I can remember that. And I, you know, often wonder why she always took me, but I began to realize, yes. I was thinking over it years later. The Holy Spirit know, was she, pushing her along. She, <laughs> yeah, she had something else in mind. That's you know. great. Yeah. Go back to that. Um, you were born and raised in what area? Rockaway. In, right here? In well, this close. is Rockaway Township. Right. We're in now. And uh, I was born and raised in Rockaway Barrow. Oh, okay. I was called Holy Rockaway. So <laughs> Distinguish it from Rockaway in New York. Oh, okay. Holy Rockaway. Um, how does your coat of arms depict um, your history? Well, first of all, there's a mountain in it. And I'm living on a mountain right now. And I was born on Hill Street. But that wasn't the reason. Uh, I'm a third order Discalced Carmelite. And the symbol of the Carmelites is a mountain. Mount Carmel. Oh, right. And uh, so that was one reason. And I have the three stars there. And they're all stars of David for the three different eras in the Carmelite order. There are two rivers uh, down at the bottom of the mountain. One is the Rockaway River, oh, okay. and the other is the Passaic River that's so important to our diocese. Sure. Um, and at the top, there are two hands, uh, like which is a Franciscan uh, symbol, the two hands. Right. One uh, is uh, brown, and the other is white, uh, to connotate the, the interracial aspect of ministry. So, and you chose and created that? Yeah. God bless you. With help, but I mean, those were the ideas. Yeah, anyway. sure. Okay, um, we're going to wind up this section, and I thank you for joining us. This is a brief interview, uh, and you just got a taste of the um, the delicious aspects of Bishop Rodimer's life, history, and the church. And we're going to come back with other interviews uh, that give us a little more history, a little more insight, and I think we all will appreciate the the tenderness with which Bishop shares his life. Thank you, Bishop. I really well, appreciate thank you, it. Father and we'll continue this. Good, thanks. Hope so. Thank you, and God bless you.